Welcome to Search for Signs. My name is Gary Willing. If this information interests you, please press the like and subscribe button and press the bell for notifications. I'm recording this video on July 19th, 2019, 42 years to the day when Maitreya left his ancient retreat in the Himalayas and entered London. Now, July 19th, 1977, right now, historically, nobody really thinks about as an important day, but it was a day that all the faiths around the world who, who are waiting for a teacher, all the major religions are waiting for a teacher to come back. Christians, Hindus, Muslims, Jewish people um, are all waiting, and the Buddhists are all waiting for a teacher to come back at some point. And on July 19th, 1977, that happened. Now, Maitreya entered London via a plane. He actually had to ride in a plane from uh, the Himalayas all the way over to London. Now, he could have thought himself that way in an instant. But he did that, and like I always joke around and say, I don't know if he rode on the, the if he was in the, on the window seat, the, the middle, or the aisle. <laughs> but anyway, he rode on the plane some kind of way. But um, he did it in order to fulfill the man-made prophecy that the Christ would come back into the world, you know, from the clouds. And he did it in order to fulfill that prophecy and not shock the ever-loving you-know-what out of everyone by coming in the way that, myst the mystical way that everyone was expecting. Because the Christ never, ever comes as a mystical figure. We all interpret him that way. And the longer it goes on that, the, 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 you know, our beliefs go on and the way that we're going on, the more mystical they, he seems to become, you know. But the Christ has never been that. And so, look, historically, 2,000 years ago, Jesus did not come as a mystical figure in the way that the fundamentalists at that time were expecting the Messiah to come back. So the two never really line up, and I've never really understood why people are so awaiting such a mystical figure of the Christ uh, today when Jesus didn't come that way 2,000 years ago. You know, they expected him to ride into Jerusalem on a horse with a sword and drive out, you know, uh, the, the Romans. But yet, what did he do? He rode in on a donkey. A donkey he actually had to borrow. He didn't even have the money for his own donkey, you know. And he came in very humbly, very quietly, uh, speaking of love, love thy neighbor, love thy enemy. You know, render under Caesar what is Caesar's, not, you know, as an enemy of, of the state, but actually as a, as a friend of the Romans, you know, went into their houses and spoke to them and so forth. I mean, it was just far so unusual to the people at that time that they put him to death because he was not what they had expected, but yet he was the Messiah at that time. And why would we expect it to be any different today? I don't know. You know, but that's what people still expect him to be, this mystical figure coming back from the clouds as a judge and an omnipotent judge and so forth, when the Christ is nothing of the sort. The Christ is not the only true Son of God, like that man put in the Bible. Man put in the Bible, not God. Man put that in the Bible. The Christ is the Son of Man. The Christ is one of us. It's always been one of us. And when the real relationship between the Christ and he, all of humanity is finally realized, people will realize that it is, it's far greater, that relationship between the Christ and humanity is far greater than what fundamentalist Christians believe it to be today. The Christ doesn't come at the end of the world. He's coming to help us inspire and galvanize humanity to build a brilliant new golden civilization based on righteousness and truth. It's the end of the old way of thinking, which is competition and greed, selfishness, and the be but the beginning of a new way of thinking, cooperation, brotherhood, justice, sharing, peace, 
It's coming at it's coming to end all war on this planet. Not to end the world. Totally different. He's not coming to confirm one denomination's belief of a tiny amount of people and coming just for them. Even not even coming for all the Christians, just most Baptists think he's coming just for the Baptists and not for the Methodists or the Catholics or whatever like that. He's coming just for them, <laughs> right? Never going to come like that. He's coming for the whole world, everyone without exception. No matter how far their beliefs are different from yours or mine or whatever, he is coming for every single person on this planet because the Christ is coming for all humanity. And the Christ is coming, as the Buddha put it, 2,000 years or 3,000 years ago, coming to inspire and galvanize us to build a brilliant golden civilization based on righteousness and truth. And that process has been going on for a long time, but historically it really started kicking into gear on July 19th, 1977, because he finally entered the modern world at that time, but very quietly, in secret, in incognito. Not much different than he's doing today, actually by being on TV, not recognized for who he is, not wanting to be recognized for who he is, but still speaking very quietly, very gently, and so forth. He doesn't want the reactions that, that we all saw 10 years, or 10 years ago or nine years ago when everyone thought it was Raj Batal and they swarmed Raj Batal on it, uh, you know, thinking that he was Maitreya. He doesn't want those kind of reactions. He only wants you to want for the world what he wants for the world. That's why he's doing it in a way that he can inspire and galvanize us right now, but yet not be recognized in that way. It's more important to do that than to think he is who he is or not. It doesn't matter. It's, that's the most important thing. And he's speaking in a way, very quietly, very gently, not creating a fuss, but he's speaking in a way that he's starting to remind humanity that we're all one. We all know it deep within our own hearts. We've known it since we were children, that we're all one. But he's, a, he's helping to wake us up to the fact that, that we're one. Now, it's not enough to just know it. We actually have to do something about it. And, we have to, and that starts with sharing the world's resources so that everyone in the world can have food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, and education as a right. But yet we're so far twisted in our own beliefs that, we th that certain people think that that's evil. That that has to be Satan talking in a way. When nothing could be further from the truth. And when you see Maitreya, whether it's in person or on TV, you're going to see a person who is down to earth, who's not claiming to be the Christ not claiming to be the Maestreya Buddha or anything. He's just claiming to be one of us because that's what the Christ is. It's one of us. So it's taken 2,000 years to get to this point, 42 years after he actually entered the, his ancient, you know, left his ancient retreat and entered London to get to this very point that we're at today. And so will it take another 42 years for all these changes to finally come into play? I doubt it because we don't have that much time, you know. Uh, but will it be this year? Hopefully. Maybe next year. I don't know. But sooner or later, we'll start to recognize him on TV for who he is. And sooner or later, groups of people will start to galvanize for change, you know, using Maitreya as a, as a mentor and listening to his suggestions to help our world leaders understand that we are one humanity. We're not... Americans versus the Iraqis versus the Iranians versus the North Koreans versus the, you know, Europeans versus the Russians versus this. We're all one people. And we are all one under one God. But it doesn't matter what our beliefs are. It doesn't matter what our interpretations of the ancient scriptures are. It, we're all one. And, we, and there's, that's never going to change. And so these masters, and especially Maitreya, are here to remind us of that fact. So, happy anniversary, Maitreya, coming back into the world. 
And uh, I look forward to this year being a better year than it was last year. And as always, take action. Help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos. Have a great day. Thank you.